Hello and welcome. Has China become too powerful to be accountable for its human rights record? Critics of the growing economic giant say America's dependency on it for trade and foreign policy dealings has weakened Washington's ability to point fingers at Beijing. The Obama administration's first official talks with China on human rights take place in Washington, D.C. this Thursday and Friday. Relations have been tense for months over U.S. arms sales to Taiwan and President Obama's meeting with the Dalai Lama earlier this year. China has criticized the U.S. for meddling in its internal affairs under the pretext of improving human rights. It has also released its own report condemning human rights abuses by the U.S. So on today's show, we ask what can China and the U.S. hope to gain from renewing talks on human rights? Don't forget, we want you to be a part of our conversation. You can send an SMS or an email, and we also welcome your phone calls on the show. Joining me from Beijing to discuss the issues, we have Victor Gao, director of the China National Association of International Studies, a think tank based in Beijing. He formerly worked for the Chinese Foreign Service, the United Nations Secretariat in New York City, and was an interpreter for the late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping. Mr. Gao is also executive director of the Beijing Private Equity Association. And here with me in the studio is Chinese human rights activist Harry Wu, the executive director of the Washington-based Laogai Research Foundation, which documents Chin Chinese human rights abuses in forced labor prison camps. Mr. Wu himself spent 19 years in a labor camp before coming to the U.S. in 1985. Gentlemen, I welcome you both to the show. Thank you. Mr. Gao, if I could start with you, sir, and I, I appreciate you. you joining us. Uh, I know for both uh, Mr. Wu and for you, it's a difficult and sensitive topic, and I appreciate you coming on together. But I ask you, Mr. Gao, why does China want to talk about human rights at this time and in Washington? What, what specifically does it hope to achieve? Well, I think the uh, human rights discussions between China and the United States is a very important component part of the overall China-U.S. relations. Of course, uh, human rights discussions are not the totality of the China-U.S. relations. However, between China and the United States, whatever we can do to further improve mutual understanding of each other, to get closer and closer on major issues, and so that the two countries can overcome differences, will be an important step. That's why China-U.S. relations are becoming more and more important. And it not only has implications for both China and the United States, but it has major implications for the rest of the world. Therefore, I think this uh, new round of human rights discussions between China and the United States will <laughs> enable both countries to understand how important human rights are and what are the problems and what both countries can work upon to improve human rights situations in both China and the United States. Therefore, I think it's a very positive step, and we look forward to the uh, discussions with great expectation. Now, of course, Mr. Gao, it's, it's an issue that uh, the U.S. raises regularly with, uh, with China, and I wonder um, what sort of pressure there will be for, for real change on the ground. What sort of impact do you think these talks will have in changing anything in terms of the way people function in China? Well, two things. One is that the discussions about human rights and also even some more uh, sensitive issues between China and the United States are very important and I think from the Chinese perspective we can learn a lot from such an exchange of ideas. However, if the discussions are framed in such a way as to apply pressure to China, then China will not budge and the result will, will not be very positive. Therefore, I think the Chinese uh, go into such discussions in the expectation that it will be a dialogue, it will be a friendly discussion, it will be a good exchange of ideas, an exchange of how to improve the relations and overcome the differences. It is not the Chinese subjecting themselves to the pressure applied to uh, China by the United States. Therefore, I think if anyone believes that by holding such uh, dialogue or by China agreeing to attend such a uh, dialogue is an indication of either the United States applying pressure to China or China about to yield to the pressure from the United States. That will okay. be a wrong, mis wrong uh, signal. All right. Mr. Wu, thank you very much for joining us as well, sir. Um, how honest and frank do you expect these talks to be? It's the first time the Obama administration is talking with Chinese officials like this. Yeah, I want to remind you that uh, in, sub uh, in July 2008, I privately meet President Bush in the White House. And he walk in, I shake my hand, and he say, what's the problem with China? I have not answered, he said, human rights. You see, human rights is a big problem. And China is a communist routine. I have to you know, remind us, unfortunately it is. And as a communist regime, we think it's very simple that it's one party ruling the country is not allowed to anyone free to speak. 
So Google withdraw from China, and as you know, and Liu Xiaobo write a zero A charter going into the jail. And Lao Gai systems still operated. Many representatives in People's Congress talking about the Lao Jiao, it means the government can using this so-called law forbidding the people like uh, three years at least. To, you know, it's a kind of illegal. And I want to remind you here is a pictures. Okay. This lady, today they are living in Thailand. They run away from China because they have uh, three kids. Mm -hmm. okay. This is population control right. policy. I mean, we'll go to other specifics in a moment, but let me ask you one thing, though. Of course, you know, interestingly, China for 11 years has been producing its own report on human rights abuses in, in, or human, right, uh, human rights conditions in the United States. And the figures sometimes, uh, you know, look quite disturbing when you see. They're actually from U.S. sources. Uh, when you look at some of the issues, you know, have the government spying on citizens under the 2001 Patriot Act. You have issues such as, uh, you know, s well, number 7.3 million Americans in the correctional system, high levels of poverty and so on. A lot of people then say, well, should, should America be pointing fingers at China when it has so much to fix at home? Well, this is recently that uh, Chinese government issue an uh, American human rights report. Mm -hmm. This American issue Chinese human rights report is a, conf uh, it's a contradiction to each other. I think it's good. American like this uh, human rights report, you can point out, or you can give you the only information. For example, you can ask how many prison camp and what the prison is doing. And can we ask you how many prison camp inside China, how many people are there? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, how many people executed in America and how many people executed in China? And China never talk about this. And how, is uh, Chinese stop using the organ from the executed prisoners? America never do it. I think this public dialogue is good. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask uh, Mr. Victor Gao again here then. So what, what sort of concessions or what kind of uh, achievement do you think China will be looking for from these talks? What do they hope to, to get out of these meetings in Washington? Now, first of all, let me uh, say this. If anyone thinks that either the United States or China has a perfect record on human rights, I would disagree. And that is why such, import, uh, the, such dialogue is uh, of great importance. If anyone believes that China, only China has uh, such a human rights problems and the United States has no such records, no, I would disagree. Both countries have uh, major issues in human rights uh, sector, and both countries can learn from each other and really uh, 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 do things to further improve their respective uh, human rights uh, situation. Now, in China, of course, we have a lot of problems. China is a big country, 1.3 uh, billion people. But if anyone believes that the main theme in China is human rights abuse, then how can you explain we have made such great transformation of China, both economically but also even more importantly in the political area? And I think uh, the fact that the Chinese people are now having greater and greater amount of participation in the political activities in the country is a record for everyone to see. There is no need to deny that. There is no need to ignore that because that is the foundation upon which the Chinese economic miracles are based upon. Now, if anyone just wants to be seized upon by the human rights problems in China, as if that is the totality or all the truth about China, then he or she may be completely wrong. The truth is we need to do whatever we can to further improve the human rights situations in China. Things are getting better. Don't be impatient. Don't believe that whatever we have today is the end of the story. We will have a better situation tomorrow in terms of human rights, and we can learn from many other countries, including the United States, in how to make sure that the human rights can be better protected and the country, the government, the state, the police, the law enforcement people can become more and more aware of the importance of protecting the human rights. More recently, the Chinese government has emphasized a lot the dignity of the people, which was never mentioned in such great detail before. I think that is, again, a very important step in the right direction. We need to fully be aware of the dignity of the people and whatever that comes along with that. That will be an important step that we as a country, as a nation, can do to further protect human rights. Okay. Mr. Wu, that is an encouraging message. I mean, that, it, certainly China is different from when, you know, certainly you experienced, you had some pretty bad experiences, but it's, it's changed a lot since then as well, hasn't it? Aren't you encouraged? Well, the war is changing, the situation is changing, maybe something changing in China. But anyway, 
I did not hear anything from the opposition to say, well, here's the problem with Chinese human rights issue. Okay, because we have to clear about it. For example, the birth control policy. Mm -hmm. It's 1.2, 1.3 billion population. Every woman before they married or after the marriage, they have the government permit to give a birth. Mm -hmm. And Roma Catholic today is and 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 legally in inside China. Okay, and the labor camps and still there and. The product was export to United States, mm -hmm. and why Google pull it out from China? No, no, I mean, I mean uh, you know, it's understandable. Our, our guest in uh, in Beijing did recognize there are issues on on both sides. That you know, not to be and saying not to be impatient uh, for things to change overnight. Do you think a country like China, uh, with its size, with its system that's been entrenched for so long, can uh, create so much change on an overnight basis? It's, it's going to take time, surely. Well, I think maybe next year, 2012, will be a critical year because Chinese leadership system is going to be replaced by someone. We do not know. But anyway, today the Communist Party is very different from the before because the capitalist can become a member of the Communist Party. And Communist Party members, they are fighting for communism revolution. Are they truly to want to fight for communism revolution? They start, have to stop the capitalism. So very contradiction issue today in China, just as the gentleman said that we want to approve, we disagree, whatever. This is uh, some language, but it's not really the fact, mm -hmm. the truth. Well, we look at some of the changes coming up in a second. We have, uh, I'm going to ask you gentlemen to stand, stand by. We take a short, very short break. More of our discussion in a moment on what China and the US hope to get out of these weeks uh, this week's talks in human rights uh, here in Washington, D.C. Don't go away.